In today's video, we are going to quickly highlight the use cases for Copilot. If you are not learning ChatGPT or on how to use ChatGPT and the various uh, programs associated with it, such as Copilot, you are going to fall behind. That is the way forward. There is no way around it. You need to use AI. That's it. Uh, so in this video, we are going to use Copilot to just generate three scripts to kind of give you an idea on how you could use it. Um, so the first one is we are going to quickly create a, a just a stock program that's going to pull down a stock information using the Yahoo Financials library. We are going to use um, Copilot to create a YAML file that will be for the Ansible playbook, playbook in order to download and install common Debian packages on our new servers. And then the last one it will be a a script that will work with the random user api to pull down 10 new users that we could use in our active directory test environment and then last but not least is the chat function and i will explain all of that in this video it is definitely worth your time to learn ChatGPT and copilot so definitely be sure to check out this full video so let's get started all right, so the first step is obviously installing the extension within Visual Studio. So if you go over to the left side, you're going to go down to the extensions tab or control shift X, click on that. And then in the search bar, go ahead and search Copilot. You will click on the first one and you could go ahead and click install over here on the right. Or if you highlight it, there'll be a little button that says install. Go ahead and install that extension. That will also install the GitHub Copilot chat extension, which I will explain later on in this video. And once that has been completed after a few minutes, the only other thing that you have to do is at the bottom right, you will get a notification. If you click on that notification, it will present you with the option to authenticate with your GitHub credentials. Uh, so go ahead and just follow that process. It's pretty straightforward. You are just if you're already logged in it will just ask you to allow this integration and then you just accept a few things and you will be uh, at step one so for the first example we are just going to quickly create a python function that will integrate with a finance api to pull down stock information or ticker information uh, so all we are going to do is we are going to press Control i and that will integrate or ask github copilot to do something uh, right here in this window so let's go ahead and do our first prompt so again it's going to um, you're going to ask copilot to generate some code so it's kind of just give a simple explanation um, asking uh, what we need so so let's just give a quick prompt and uh, see what we get All right, so you could see that we have the first iteration of that prompt. So we have import y finance as yf. Um, so essentially importing a library as the yf. So we can go ahead and use yf instead of y finance. Uh, and then it defines the function get ticker info. Here, uh, ticker is the variable, assigns it to yf. Uh, and then within that um, library has a ticker function and it passes through this spy as an argument. And then we just get the info from the ticker variable and then we return that uh, and then down here this is what calls it and then we're going to print that info um, so i already went through this before but i do know that the y finance uh, will give you some error as it is no longer maintained so the other option that we have uh, so let's go ahead and just modify this code so we're, again we're going to press Control i and let's say modify So modify this code to use Yahoo Financials library instead of Y Finance. Go ahead and hit accept. And then it is just going to modify it. So from Yahoo Financials, import uh, Yahoo Financials. It's gonna kind of do the same thing down here. And um, that's pretty much it. The only other thing that you need to take note of is if you do not have this library installed, um, Copilot is not going to install it for you. You have to go down to your terminal and then like use pip install yahoo financials and that will go ahead and install that yahoo financials um library for you before doing so i definitely recommend going to pipi.org and looking up the yahoo financials uh, library to get more information about it to make sure it is something that you want installed on your machine uh get any comments about it uh, make sure that it's still maybe being maintained or maybe it's not for instance, for Y Finance, it was no longer maintained. So with some searches on Google, I was able to find out that that 
error was because of that um, not being up to date uh, so definitely go ahead check that library out make sure it is something that you want to install on your machine uh, if it is go ahead close it out again run pip install install that out and then and then you should be able to run this code um, so we're just going to go ahead and save it and then we will run it all right so once you have it saved so i had saved it to uh yt for youtube dash ticker info dot pi and saved it in my downloads folder uh, and then from this point forward, we are just going to go ahead and execute it by pressing Control 5. Uh, give it a minute, and we will get the results for the spy ticker. And just like that, we have our first script within minutes using Copilot to pull down stock information uh, with the spy. Now you can go ahead and modify it using Control I again and say, uh, so let's exit that. And let's highlight this. Actually, we'll just highlight this entire code right here and hit Control I and then modify function to use so instead of uh, having ticker and a defined ticker here we want to get that information being passed through to this function maybe down here so let's go ahead and uh, modify that it's going to ask us if we like it and it's kind of just like you see in the uh, in github uh, a diff between two files so in this case we see red for difference so it's getting rid of the ticker equals spy and instead we are passing through ticker so let's go ahead and hit accept um, so we did make a modification so now if we executed this github um, or copilot did not make the modification down here is because we did not request it or explain it uh, as you can see, the error we are getting is get spy info is not defined, uh, which it also, I guess, I didn't even realize that this has been modified as well, get ticker info, and uh, it was get spy info. So let's go ahead and we'll just do the same thing, highlight that, and let's say modify. So um, we asked it to modify this spy info and to use get ticker info and pass through the Microsoft ticker. So spy info equals get ticker info, which is this function here. And again, we are passing through Microsoft now up here. Hit accept. And that's pretty much it. So if we go ahead and save that, we execute that. And we're just kind of giving examples on how useful Copilot can be. And again, within a matter of minutes, we were able to get uh, two functions built out pretty much. The first one was not usable as it used a old library and now we're using Yahoo Financials. And then with that, we were able to modify it a few times uh, just by kind of highlighting it, control I and asking the copilot to go ahead and make that modification for us. As you can see, we have that information down here at the bottom. Uh, so we know it works as uh, intended. So the next example or use case that I want to uh, explain is obviously it's not just for Python, it's for anything or any language pretty much that uh, GitHub has knowledge of. So the next example I want to do is go ahead and create a new file. And then in here, we'll just do, uh, we do text file for now. Uh, and then we're gonna press control I. So let's say we're building out our home lab or in a production environment, we are trying to use a Ansible playbook to go ahead and prov uh, provision our new servers. So every time a new server gets um, implemented into our environment, we want this playbook to go ahead and install new packages or um, common packages so for every server maybe we want github installed or um, ssh installed whatever whatever we want we want ansible to go ahead and do that for us uh, and instead of writing this out ourselves we go ahead and use copilot to do that so let's go ahead and ask copilot so we are asking um, Copilot to create an Ansible playbook that installs co common Debian packages for new servers in the dev host file. I do not know how to, um, I should probably word this differently because I, I can't exactly remember how it's split up, but I do remember that you could split up the Ansible playbook to only be applied to certain hosts. Uh, and then within that host file, you have like a block. Um, and in this case, I'm saying that block is dev. Uh, let's just kind of see what happens if we go ahead and send that here. Yep, that's exactly what I was looking for. So the uh, playbook is name, uh, install, comment, Debian packages, which is what we want. Um, the host is going to be all the hosts that fall under the dev block. Become true. From what I remember, this means that it's become, uh, become root to install this. So you might have to specify, I believe, the dash K option. Um, and then use that password or that information to become root in this. It's been a while. Uh, and under that, you're going to have some tasks. So the update apt, obviously, which is what we want. Um, that's going to update 
or have the most up-to-date packages if you don't do this it might install older packages so obviously we want this task to be first and then under that we want to install the common packages in this case since we did not specify um we're going to have apt as the module being used and then name and then there's several packages so this is good this is what we want the other feature that i want to highlight here is using the chat function over here on the left so let's say we don't know what common packages we want installed um I mean, you, you would know, but I'm just using this as an example. Let's say you don't know what common packages you want installed in your machine and you want to kind of get a recommendation. So you go ahead and use the chat function and now you could literally talk to ChatGPT as if you were using the um, the web uh, to, to, to integrate or interact with ChatGPT. Now we have it all in Visual Studio Code. So we get answers right here and we could also specify a few things to even interact with our environment or with our code. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're just going to say so so what are some common debian packages installed for new servers list three all right so there's some good ones so um curl vim i've never used this one but i i think okay so it's just getting uh common libraries and and um, other utilities that are common so that is a good one and then we got curl obviously and then vim maybe another one be ssh like i said or ssh server so um, we could ssh into these server these new servers um so since we have this now let's go ahead and see how we can modify the code over here uh, so we can go ahead and we can do workspace so how can we implement these packages into our code so it's going to look at our workspace and then show us how we could put these three packages into here obviously we know how to do it just kind of explaining how this could be useful. And obviously this code is, code is only 17 lines. Now, if it was hundreds or thousands of lines, this is where it might come in use uh, as far as looking at the um, workspace. So as you can see here, it kind of gives us the example code here. So we have the name and then you can see it made the changes for us. So build dash to central curl and vim. Uh, and this playbook will install and it just kind of gives us a brief explanation as to exactly what it will do. And up here it shows you what happened it also gives you obviously the references so really all you could do um or a quick way is just go ahead and highlight that code hit Control i um i don't know if it has the knowledge of this actually it's kind of worth um let's see no it doesn't so let's go ahead and discard that out um or maybe i just worded it wrong or maybe there i mean there is different commands that you could use as well so maybe i'm just not doing it right um you might be able to do it on the other side too but in this case it's pretty simple so let's just say modify so modify the packages to instead install build essential curl and vim so we should get that diff file and um that does not look right All right, there we go. So um, we just have to change the prompt a little bit. So modify the code to install build essential curl and vim instead of package one, two, and three. In this case, we could have done it ourselves, but again, we're just highlighting what you could use uh, Copilot for. And that's it. So now if we installed or use this configuration file, this YAML file on our um, Ansible server, we go ahead and push this out and um, install De common Debian packages on our new servers. One last example to kind of Put it all together uh, this is going to be used in the future actually in a different lab um, so one of the things that i need to do is i want to generate an active directory lab and in that lab i want to have a bunch of test users that i can go ahead and play around with uh, so what i thought of is why not have a python script that's going ahead and generate that information for me i have to look into exactly how i could implement that into active directory i have not done that research yet but if i wanted to for instance i could go ahead and use the chat function how can I Let's see if this gives us any information? There we go. So it even gives us everything for us. Uh, so it, it would, it looks like it would import the CSV obviously under the users. And then we would loop through each of the users. Obviously this is PowerShell, which it probably says up here. Yep. PowerShell. Uh, it's going to use a new AD user commandlet. 
and then it's going to pass through each of the information to there, um, which is awesome. Uh, so again, this is going to be in the future lab. So this is kind of the example I came up with. So real quick, let's go ahead and again, use Copilot and let's say generate. Create a Python function that interacts with the random generator, random user generator to create 10 users and export to CSV. So let's go ahead and read it real quick. So import CSV library from random user, import random user. This wasn't exactly what I was looking for, um, but maybe this has it, the information for us anyway. There was an API that I was looking to use, which let's see if we can find it in here. So this is just looking at that. Um, the random user generator. So let's see if we can just modify this real quick. I just wanted to highlight that we could even get information from an API. Uh, did I click the wrong button? Or maybe this is. No, okay. So this is kind of, I'm, I'm not sure what this library is. Uh, this, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, so I just said modify the script to use the random user generator API instead of random user library. Uh, so it looks like it just um, changes out instead of using this library, it uses requests, uh, which is going to interact with the random user dot me API. And then it's going to just uh, use a, the request library to perform a get function, use the API endpoint, which is here, and then it's going to pass through the parameters. So it's looking for 10. And then the user's response. Uh, so so I, I bet you that random user um, library might even even do this for us without using the request library. So it's probably the, the better way to go. But in this case, let's go ahead and save this out and see what happens. So I saved it to YouTube-randomuser.py and then let's go ahead and control F5. So it looks like it did generate something. So let's go see what the results are. So within the path, we'll just go ahead and open that. Uh, so one thing I noticed, I wasn't getting the path and I just realized that this function is not being called. So right now we just have a function. Uh, so let's go ahead here at the bottom and see if that works. So we'll go ahead and just call it real quick. and then execute. And it says users exported to users.csv. All right, so it looks like I was able to get that information. Uh, so now under name, email, username, and password, we have the name, um, email, username, and there's a plain text password that it had generated. So this might not be the format, obviously, that we would need uh, for the example that I just provided, maybe setting up an Active Directory uh, test environment with test users, um, but this kind of gets to that point there. Again, we could use um, the chat function to let's see what additional. So, what additional information can we pull from the random user API? So maybe we wanted like a hash value of that password or a phone number or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so we use the chat function to kind of get us more information about that API. So we could even modify it further. So let's say we want to. So it just looks like it went down here and it's going to add the phone number and date of birth and it's going to assign that to phone and date of birth variable and then grabbing it from the uh, user list and the phone value. So we'll go ahead and hit accept. So now if we generate that again. So it looks like we have an error. Um, so maybe if we do control I hit fix, either way, I'm not going to go ahead and work out this problem now, uh, but you get the point you go ahead, use chat, uh, the chat function to get additional information, go ahead and modify the script over here using control I, you're able to, to, um, work with copilot to just generate code within minutes. Um, like I explained in the beginning or in the intro of this video, the reason why this is so important is because especially for those that are in a, um, a position where they're not really a front end developer but they're trying to get uh, information quick. Um, you could generate scripts to do that for you. And in this case, I give you three quick examples just off the top of my head uh, on how you could use this a copilot. So I hope you were able to take something away. I know I'm going to be using this every day. If you have any questions, drop a comment. And as always, never stop learning.